Can everyone hear me? So by way of preamble, I don't really go in for ghosts. Um, and whether or not this is a ghost story, I will leave up to you. However, the whole thing started a long time ago with two ghosts. Though at the time, I didn't realize they were ghosts. I didn't look over there and think, OK, well, there's Aphrodite and Mars sitting next to each other on a curb begging for change. As far as I knew, they were just two impudent, arrogant, dirty, homeless teenagers who were hanging out, clearly without anywhere else to go. They didn't have any family. They didn't have a place where they could reside. And they just sat there on their corner begging for change and always looking after each other. They held hands, they kissed, there was that lustful uh, look in their eyes as well as this great deal of, of tenderness. And I remember looking at them with such longing in a way because they were so free in this world even though they seemed to have nothing. And then I saw them many, many years later in, uh, in Paris at a soup kitchen. And then I saw them again in New York on the Bowery. Only that time they were, they were two punks. And then I saw them again when I was living in, in, uh, in Berkeley on Telegraph Avenue, and then they were two goths. And I guess the story always ends the same way, because one day I walked by their corner and they were gone. And I realized that they weren't Romeo and Juliet, because they didn't have the Montagues or the Capulets to go after them. And they weren't Tristan and Isolde, because they didn't have King Mark. And they weren't even Thelma and Louise, because they didn't have Harvey Keitel. <laughs> they were the unpursued. So this is their story. And I'm only going to be reading Sam tonight. And let's see where they go. Sam starts November 22nd, 1863. We might want to consider that that was a time that had to do with slavery, civil war, Cold Harbor, the death of a president famous for a very big hat, the formation of the Ku Klux Klan. Eventually, we get to a moment when someone shouted out, Atlantic and Pacific joined together, never to be parted, the golden spike. So if you care, you might want to bear those facts in mind. <clears throat> Halos, Hales Karth, contraband. I can walk away from anything. Everyone loves the dream, but I kill it. Bald eagles soar over me. Reve, rebel. I jump free this wheel on fire. Blaze a breeze. I'll devastate the world. No big deal. New mutiny all around. The twist, the smile, the frown. Almighty 16. And so free. Rebounding without even a cap. Golden bears bow at my knee. Go ahead, Lieutenant General. Take it all. American beavers also chitter scared bowing, fawning to, why don't I have a hat? Turning around, a foal wobbles over with soft nose. You're impressive. I pick him up. Coyotes add, you impress everyone. Approval unanimous. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy, vanguard, surrendering nothing. But April does. This land is my land, treats me reverentially. My force earning the rickety field cricket legs. Mule deer snort. You're our end, cougars purple. By my hand, fire ants and badgers feud. Glaciers move. Well, that's a beginning. Kingbirds hatch and peekaboo. Monarchs wake too. I'm a new horror upon the earth. 
releasing floods, sluicing rapids. No big deal. Me. Top of such heights, my salutations ring down, and from frozen fields, cataracts surge loose, racing whorls of egalitarian wisps by forests of pale harm. And from slate-scattered screes where blablating brook trout glee, I start the ball rolling by ambling off. My fiery mountain top hollers, he. A thousand starlings soar through dissipating mists. I will sacrifice nothing, for there are no countries except me. And there is only one boundary, me. Of course, boreal toads and milk snakes applaud. Run on, master. Name my carried yearling agrees. By and by, I round the bends thrillingly. My mule on my back comforts curiosity. Tranquility and civil authority. Wasps and cottontails flurry. I'm no hurry. But what now worries me? Terribly unique, heart-endingly sharp. Out there, my only harm. Of course, I approach the edge. Roams below, drippling my extent of my thawing ramble. Surely. I'm the mountain which the world climbs down from, and I laugh because it tickles. Martin's wheel, and though with a wave I could raise it all, I'm fascinated. My donkey trots off, never fall. Somehow wider, some way stiller, out there somewhere, another killer. Exciting. But spinning round to share suspicions, I find some crone with fleeing lassoing my terrified pony. Get gone, scalawag, she'll spit, even if fourteen teeth split and crumble. Free him now, I brash, ready to burn her, turn her, blow her to ash. But also amused, I calmly approach. She tightens the ropes until hoarse groans. Then abruptly both are gone. A long tear quits me, tumbles by my strife, and on the dry paths, lashes my earth with life. Well, that's the end. What wrath and withering woe just stole my friend. And here I am again, alone. No more soft nose. Time to just set this fucker off. No big deal. But what about peace, bighorn sheep and worms romp? My destruction is the ultimate peace. Over with a hit, a flick. There's so much more to greet, talks a woodpecker's beak. Couldn't care less. I elect to kiss the world away. Won't take much. That's it. Pitiless. Kneel, kiss hag, horse, mountain and all. A bye-bye. By this. Only before my lips can afflict. Giggles. Bustles behind scoffing crows. Gold eyes. The flecks of green. Bumbles out, bootless, upon her king. She even stumbles over me. Terror and awe, paralyzed. After all, I am her size redemptions. Dissuade in New Delhi, mallards and hawks preen. Lost my balance, she schemes, loosening a fumble of wild hair. My nostrils flare. My shoulders catch continents. My open palms detach horizons. I stand and scorch her falling sky. I'm her world. Of course, dear Tyro trembles. What a captivating smile. You okay, she choirs. My fumy snorts, blistering maces. Waving her hand, slow. My severity burning out her possible plans. Simpleton, she concludes. No biggie, I need shoes. Two, I'm off to find some falling snow. Shrugging, I gift her my laugh. Its lift so staggering overcomes her. She hyperventilates, bends agonized. What hurt I deliver with just a hatless shuffle and flap. When suddenly, by a wild of only wind, I strangely blurt. I promise I'll never leave you. Flash follows, searing line to wide. Fascinating. She curtsies. I'm Haley. Hi. Oh, I fell off. <laughs>